Okay, now we're going to talk about linear kinematics. And kinematics is just the description of motion. It has nothing to do with forces or the source of motion. It just describes what you see. So it can answer questions such as, how far did I run? So you can give distance. How fast did I run? Gets into velocity, which is the change in distance over time. And can I run faster? Which would refer to your acceleration or the change in velocity over time. Are you speeding up or slowing down? So let's look at motion. We have two types. Translatory is one, which is more linear motion, also referred to as rectilinear motion, which includes the path of a bowling ball or the path of a sled down a hill or even a water skier. Okay? You can also have curvilinear. So linear does not necessarily mean a straight line. It just means from point A to point B. And point A and point B are not in the same spot. So curvilinear would be your wrist in bowling. So if you put a dot on your wrist and you looked at just that dot moving as you um, prepared to bowl, it would go in a semicircle or uh, semicircle motion. The path of the ball is curvilinear during any, any sort of sporting event. And then the other type of motion is rotary or angular. So we have linear and angular, our two worlds that we're going to live in in biomechanics. This is an object acting as a radius which moves about a fixed point. So if you look at your radius and ulna, they are an object. If you look at your elbow joint and you flex and extend at the elbow joint, you are basically moving that radius and ulna bones about that fixed point, which is your elbow joint. So basically, all our joints move in angular motion. So examples of this um, are also wheels. So you have your axle, and the wheels roll around that axle or, or move around that axle in angular motion. The lever of a slot machine, which aren't used that much anymore, but back in the, the battle days, there was a lever which would go through angular motion. All right, so visually, let's look at these. So you see the wheel, okay, here's its axis, and it goes through angular motion. The skier coming down the slope is curvilinear motion, because position A and position B are not the same spot. And this is linear motion, kind of doing a sidestep movement. Both of those combine to form something we call general motion. So general motion is a combination of rotary and translatory. A bicycle, a train, a car, and most importantly, at least for this course, humans go through general motion. So we can move across, say, a room your joints will be going through angular motion, but your center of mass will be translating across the room. So let's take a, a closer look at this. Um, as I just said, the center of gravity would be linear or curvilinear, and your joints would be angular motion. All right, so the first term of the three that we're going to cover, displacement, velocity and acceleration is displacement. But there's also this concept of distance, and so we need to understand the difference between displacement and distance. So displacement is the, dis the direct, the shortest route be between position A and position B, and distance is the actual path that you ran. So I've had the experience recently of running half marathons, and which is 13.1 miles, but when I'm finished at the finish line, my GPS says I run about um, 13 and a half miles. Okay, and so what's the, dis the, the difference there is how they chart the course would be more the displacement, and I'm going a further distance. So here are some examples. So from A to B in a straight line, the distance and the displacement are the same. So that would, for number one, the answer would be C. For number two, the displacement again is the straight line between A and B, and the distance is the actual path traveled. So in this case, the distance is greater than the displacement. 
And then for number three, we have somebody going from A to B. That's the distance, but the displacement is from A to B, which is much shorter. So the displacement is much shorter than the distance again. Um, and I, I challenge you to, to think of a situation where the displacement, or I'm sorry, where the distance would be shorter than the displacement. All right, here's another visual. You see the, dis the distance in dark blue, and in turquoise you have the displacement, which is basically the shortest line between the starting point <coughs> and the ending point.